It's summer of 1971 and college students are rebelling against the government. These events sparked the curiosity of Professor Philip Zimbardo, a psychology professor at Stanford University, who set out to find answers and led a research team to conduct a human experiment. Participants were recruited from the local community via a newspaper ad that offered $15 a day to whoever would participate in a psychological study of prison life. 75 male volunteers were selected, and before entry, they were psychologically tested to make sure they were 100% normal before starting the experiment. The volunteers were randomly assigned to either the role of prisoners or prison guard. The participants selected as prison guards were given uniforms and were instructed to prevent prisoners from escaping, but were not given any instructions or training on how they were supposed to act or treat the prisoners. To make things feel more realistic, the prisoners were arrested by real police and then blindfolded. And as they didn't have any previous criminal records, none of them had any idea what to expect. They were brought back to the station, and the experiment officially began on the 15th of August. The experiment started out pretty well. Prisoners wore uncomfortable, ill-fitted smocks, and the guards were instructed to call prisoners by their assigned numbers that were sewn onto their smocks, therefore dehumanizing the prisoners. On day two of the experiment, some prisoners were feeling rebellious and ignored the guards' wake-up calls of whistles and clanging batons. So in an effort to reassert dominance and control, the clueless guards broke down the doors, stripped the prisoners naked, sprayed fire extinguishers on them, and then dragged them out, even tying some of them up. Day 3. In an effort to restrict further acts of rebellion, the guards separated the prisoners, punishing those who had major roles in the rebellion and rewarding those with minor roles. So they broke the guards the doors. were not stopped from abusing their power. They had prisoners do count-offs and do push-ups arbitrarily. They restricted access to the bathroom. They forced them to relieve themselves in a bucket in their cell. Gross. As time passed, the level of violence and abuse against prisoners kept increasing. For example, they were now making the prisoners do very humiliating tasks like cleaning the toilets with bare hands. It's only day three and the first prisoner is showing signs of emotional and psychological damage. Prisoner 8612 had a mental breakdown in which he yelled, Jesus Christ, I'm burning up inside. I can't stand another night. I just can't take it anymore. No, 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 no. Good. Upon seeing his suffering, research assistant Craig Haney immediately released 8612. Day four. Another prisoner, Prisoner 819, also began showing symptoms of distress. He began shouting and crying in his cell. After Zimbardo heard him crying, he removed him and reassured him of his real identity. By day five, five more prisoners had been released after being overwhelmed by the situation and were crying and screaming uncontrollably. The prisoners who did not break down or were not removed basically became like zombies or puppets. They were mindlessly obedient and did whatever the guards said without any hesitation. We have to remember, these are people who started out being rebels against society, and now they're like puppets. One guard even said it felt like being a puppeteer. The guards tested their control over the prisoners by making them write letters home. On day six, Christiana Malik visited the prison and was distressed when she witnessed the guards abusing the prisoners. Due to Malik's objections and increasing brutality exhibited by the guards in the experiment, Zimbardo ended the experiment on day six. To let them know the experiment was really over, he paid them $210, which is the equivalent of $1,490 in today's money. The results were surprising, somehow transforming perfectly normal people into extremely abusive and violent individuals. It turned rebels into puppets, taking and obeying commands, and even mentally broke some. Some of the guards allegedly behaved so badly that it caused dangerous and psychologically damaging situations. To many, this experiment was certainly ethically questionable, most notably because it actually continued 
for days after participants expressed their desire to withdraw. However, as questionable as this experiment was, it was most certainly not the only one. Throughout human history, many unethical and terrifying experiments have unfortunately taken place. Take this video right here, for example. These experiments are the things of nightmares, and the subjects in these experiments were definitely not volunteers, and they rarely survived.